Hi, everybody. You're watching the Alt Tab Show on Newegg TV's Twitch channel. That's and true. And today we have a very special guest for you, although also most true. of you who are already watching know that, and it is Cat Gun. I'm going to bring her up. Yay! Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. <laughs> you get your own window. Jerry and I, uh, Jenny and I have to share a window. You get your own. <laughs> oh, damn. Because you're awesome. Fight. Get out of my window. Hey! My window. <laughs> How you doing, Cat? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. We're just chipper. So some yeah. fun some fun facts. Uh, Kat and I are from the same hometown. So we're like hometown girls yeah. hanging out here. Just two we hometown home. girls. I think we're going to pick on Kyle for the next hour. Uh, yeah, I, I love having somebody else out here from Palmdale because it's like nowhere land, you know? So. Yeah, <laughs> and people look at, I love, my favorite thing from other people from Southern California, you're like, oh, I'm from Palmdale. They're like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, you have no idea where that is. Yeah. <laughs> I say, like, I like, feel like Afro Man came from here. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Uh, if you ever saw Boy in a Bubble with Jake Gyllenhaal, that was filmed entirely in Palmdale. A lot of things were even um, that one with Reese Witherspoon uh, called Wild. Which oh just yeah, out. that just that came was out. all out here. Like, there's a lot of things, even Transformers. A lot of because Hollywood's like an hour away from us. Yeah. So they always come up here in Palmdale. And anytime you see Joshua trees, those are native to this desert. So you yeah. know that they're filming out here. Yeah. You, you desert, <laughs> you desert rats, you. Desert you just have crowd. nothing to contribute to this conversation. You just you wouldn't figure somebody as pale as me came from a desert. I know. <laughs> Hey, I match that. I totally do. It's because we're gamers. It's because you're gamers. We don't see sunshine now. <laughs> we, ex we explore from our desks. All right, so um, we have our Twitter handles. Oh, no, you guys can't see them, but I can bring it back oh, to camera no. one. So here are our Twitter handles down here. I'm at GearheadGirl27. Kyle is at Forever Kyle, and Kat is at Mystic Gun, and she can type that into the Twitch chat for you guys um, because the spelling's a little different. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm special. that way you can tweet <laughs> questions to us uh, throughout the show. We'll check our Twitters if I can speak as the English today. Yeah, so for, for the Q&A Q segment that we usually do every, uh, every episode and on Alt Tab, I guess this time around we can just answer. You, you guys can ask any three of us. You can, like, shoot, shoot cat. I mean, mostly ask cat shoot questions. Me. Oh, just, shoot. just shoot her up. I mean, that's what you do, right? You just have people shoot you, and you shoot them back. You know, that's awesome. So if you guys have any questions for Kat, be sure to hit her up on her Twitter handle. Uh, this is your chance to ask her any questions if you guys are longtime fans. Um, although, it's probably not your only chance because you stream all the time, so. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> brings me to my next thing. For our New Egg TV viewers who might not know who you are, do you want to just give us a quick, like, 10-second commercial? <laughs> who is? Yeah, God. sell it. Sell commercial. yourself. Sell yourself, right? Ready? Action. Uh, <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Kat Gunn, and I am the ultimate gamer. Um, actually, I've been competing for a very long time. I've been competing all of my life. Um, I started with like Rainbow Six when I was 16, uh, and I've made, um, I'm actually currently the highest earning female gamer out there. I've made over about $200,000 playing video games, and I currently stream on Twitch and maintain that reputation by just playing shooters, fighting games, and whatnot. And uh, I still go to tournaments, I go to events. Um, but yeah, I just spend time being a gamer, you know. What's your guilty pleasure game? Guilty pleasure? Oh, yeah, like man. the game you wouldn't the want other- The game that would, like, people would be like, you're not a gamer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would probably be, I play Candy Crush. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. So does Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Steve's playing it right now. He should be modding the chat, but he's totally playing Candy Crush. Sorry. Uh, no, and then I realized how much it bothered my friends unknowingly. Like, it would tell people I needed a life, like, without even, you know, like, it tells you, like, oh, she needs a pass or she needs lives. And it just does oh, that without your really knowledge because it, it tries to make people get into the land of Candy Crush. Uh, so, yeah, I stopped. I stopped after that. I'm like, stop annoying my friends, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other than Candy Crush, I don't think there's there's really not too many games. Like I've been spending time playing. Uh, I just beat Dying Light. I just came out. Um, that's Jaraxxus, my telephone, um, <laughs> which is from Hearthstone, which I play a lot. Um, Heroes of the Storm, which is uh, currently in closed beta, uh -huh. and um, I guess Battlefield's coming out in a few days too. So I just kind of I stay on top of like whatever's recent or whatever's coming out. So, so that's Battlefield Hardline, right? That's coming out. Yes. Okay. Yep. The, it's a it's an open beta. It's coming out February third, which yeah. I'm looking forward to playing. I played it a little bit. Excuse me. Sorry, everybody. I had Buffalo Wild Wings for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's biting back. 
Um, Good, smooth going down, bumpy coming out. It wasn't smooth going down. Um, <laughs> what flavor wings? I just go there all the time. traditional. I, I the only buffalo sauce I like is buffalo sauce. <laughs> I got I got the okay. wild ones. I got the wild ones because it's Buffalo Wild, wild Wings. Wild. So I was like, I'll get the wild sauce, and it was it mm, burned my yum. burned my face off. It was pretty hot. You gotta try Asian Zing, man. That one's good. Oh yeah, T Tina was having that one earlier. Yeah, mm -hmm. Asian she, Zing's she, really she, good. she seemed to enjoy it. But yeah. so I was gonna ask you. So you are a high-ranking gamer and the m most paid or the highest paid female gamer out there right now. What are some common misconceptions that people might have? about being a professional gamer or being in the spotlight as a gamer. I mean, like when I, if I were to tell my mom like, "Oh, I'm a pro gamer, mom." She might just think <laughs> that I that I play video games all day and just sit on my butt and that's pretty much it. Oh, he just plays yeah. video games and there's like a monkey who throws money at him, you know, and yeah. pay, pays his bills. What's the biggest misconception that you get all the time I'm totally from picturing that like what th people think I do, what I actually do. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, what, what would you put uh, in those squares? Um, so yeah, definitely the stereotype is that, you know, you're a basement dweller, um, that doesn't really get out much, or like you live with your parents, so on and so forth, but... You do, it, you do live in the desert, and you are very poor. There are no, I will have you know, Just there saying. are no basements uh, in Palm Beach. I'm on the second floor, first of all, which is okay. like opposite of a basement, and not with my parents, so Stand, stand yay, corrected. Yay for me, high five cat. Um, <laughs> I'm in the attic, <laughs> fools. Sorry. <laughs> right? All right. All right, so continue. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that there's a lot of stereotypes with it, but it's it's truly come around, like especially with Twitch. Um, Twitch to me is such an amazing place uh, because now people literally are making six figures just based off uh, Twitch endorsements and like sponsors and as well as donations and people's support that just tune in and watch them. So I find that like absolutely amazing, which has totally changed the idea of pro gaming. Because pro gaming before was like, you know, Twitch wasn't available. So you'd have to sp spend like eight hours a day, uh, make sure you have a job to pay for your flight, your way to get to the event, so on and so forth. But now with Twitch being available, there's a lot of pro gamers out there that are just like, yeah, I'm not going to do the pro gaming thing. I'm actually going to stick to just streaming and being a personality and, and delivering content on that kind of basis or doing YouTube. You know, YouTube is definitely one of those areas where people do walkthroughs and have a ton of support through doing that. Um, so being a pro gamer nowadays is definitely hard work. And it always has been, but it's like what's nice about Twitch is it can support you being a pro gamer or it could just support you being a gamer. So, Very yeah, nice. it's changed. That's awesome. hard. Something we were talking about earlier today, uh, that you know, something we both know very well, and I'm sure you do too, is that when you are an online personality, whether it be video games or YouTube or you know what I like to call for our our little neck of the woods is tech tube. Um, yeah. You kind of you have a lot of social interaction, and then also at the same time none at all. So it's like you you kind of miss real people after a month. <laughs> you know, after a while, like if I didn't have Steve, I go crazy on the days when Steve isn't here and I'm just sitting in this room by myself, yeah. you know, trying to make stuff up and figure out like what I'm gonna do for content. I just kind of sit there like talking to myself all day. It's That's just... what's amazing about Twitch is that I've actually developed um, a lot of friendships through that and vice versa. They've also like within their, their own chat community, they all Skype with each other. They all play Minecraft when I'm not online. So they've all kind of developed this relationship. And not only that, I'm super thankful for my Twitch chat because I get stuck in video games. <laughs> and if it wasn't for my chat, like, cat, turn around. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's really awesome because they're, they've already played through the game. They've already dealt with that kind of, you know, crap in, in games where you get stuck or walk into, am I allowed to say crap? No, you, you can <laughs> say crap. crap. <laughs> yeah. No, you're, yeah. You're cat gun. Okay. You can say whatever you want, you know, all right? Walk into the bleep and then... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, it helps a lot to have them not only just to relate to and have your life stories and, and talk to them about their life, um, but also when you're going through video games and, whoa, and you whoa, need to whoa. know, like, which way do I go? Where do I go? Crap is way over the top. Oh, I, I guess we can't say crap. We're going to be taken off the line, offline, if, uh, <laughs> if we say crap one more time, Steve's, which I just said it twice. These yeah. fragile, fragile little just, ears are... Just, just keep playing Candy Crush, Steve. <laughs> Don't turn around again. Don't make me come back there. But no, that total. So I totally get. So maybe I should get. put up this tweet right now. That what is it? 
one of my favorites from earlier this week. Oh yeah, you guys were talking let's about dying light. Let's night take it runs. to the next level. We'll take it to the next level after crap. What is it, Jenny? I can't read it. <laughs> you can, but you can, you can allude to it. All right. So, so, so Steve, Steve posted a tweet the other day uh, okay. about dying light. Uh, simply, the phrase read something like, "Night runs are the shit." <laughs> night runs are the. He was like saying, "Night, night runs are cool." Basically, night runs are the shit. It's night <laughs> runs are the <laughs> crap synonym. Anyway, and then Paul, Paul, our own very <laughs> beloved Paul, came back with a pretty brilliant line. Was like. Something like I'd recommend Pepto Bismol for that. Bismol for that. For the night runs. <laughs> well, no, you started it. You said something about no. night runs. No, I said that after him. Oh, okay. I said that after. Uh, him. Everybody but, loves good jokes. I know. We could be. I'm we could be. Board. We could be much more vulgar on Twitter than we can on Twitch. <laughs> that's the moral of the story. Uh, yeah. yeah. But that's no, dying light's actually really cool like that. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to play it yet, but it's I it's played it, insane. I played a little bit of it. I died very very quickly, um, <laughs> several times, and I just kind of yes. got frustrated because my skill level. It, I was playing a demo, and they kind of like drop you when you play demos. They just kind of drop you in the middle of mm, something, yep. and so you don't have time to like develop the skill to play the game. Yeah. So I was just. Screwed. Cro Chrono Fusion uh, guy in the chat said, "Night runs is what happens when you hit your 30s." <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that if that's the case. Seems a little premature. Uh, if you're having night runs in your 30s, I think you should go see someone, Chrono. Just yeah. My own, my own two cents. That's too early. Yeah, just my own two cents. It's too much Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, Jay, Jay wants me to give him a shout out. You attention whore. Jay. Hi, Jay. I love you, Jay. You're oh, you said the W word. Okay, we can say the W. Yeah. Word. Don't. D God forbid we say crap. <laughs> but condescend everyone all you want. It's totally cool. Uh, that's funny. But um, um, that's really cool about uh, what you were saying earlier. How like your fans and the people that watch you can help you out. It's almost like having like a like a con a continual like walkthrough guide next to you every step of the way. Yeah, because yeah. but that also like kind of ties into how you relate to your audience because they've all kind of been there before. They were all in that same spot, just like you, yeah. trying to figure out where to go. And so you're you're connecting not just with each other on a personal level, but with the, through the games as well, and um, you know how you guys handle certain situations the same or differently. Uh, that's that must be a cool experience with your with your fans. Yeah, somebody sent me a message once because when Twitch first started, I'm like, who wants to watch people play video games? Like right. the, the concept seems silly, uh, but I find myself tuning into pros all the time. <laughs> Why, did you feel the same way, or are you like watching people? I like watching people. Yeah. I like. Um, yeah, I do now too. I, I'm addicted to it. I just put it on in the background and listen to it, yeah, or have it on. Yeah. I can tune back to it because it teaches me a lot about um, about gameplay in general, and also if it's a game that I know I'm not going to have time for, particularly like doing what I do, I still would like to know enough about that video game that if somebody comes up to me and they're like, "Oh, hey, Jenny, did you get to play this?" and I can say, "No, I didn't play it, but I watched a lot of it. Did you play yeah. it?" and I can actually have yeah. like an intelligent conversation with that person about it. So that helps a lot, and also it's kind of like the whole, again, the alone together thing. We watch <laughs> YouTubers and we watch Twitch streamers because it feels like we're hanging out with somebody. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what somebody <laughs> said to me, and, and it that's when I had the Forever opinion. alone. <laughs> and, then, and then you cut the stream, you're like, all right, stream's over, guys, and you're like, where did all my friends go? <laughs> I just had like a couple thousand friends and they're all gone. I just, I just killed all my friends. Yeah. Like, all right, now I'm gonna stream some more because I'm Ronry. <laughs> uh, but no, I was so happy when somebody sent me like a paragraph long of explaining, like, hey, I, I find your Twitch, you know, it's really entertaining to tune in and it's really fun. But what they said dawned on me. They were like, yeah, you know, when when I was younger with my friends, we would all sit around and only one person gets the controller. You know, and you all have to watch somebody, whether it's like a single right. player game, or even if you're split screening, which nobody likes to do, um, then you, you all get to share that experience. And I think that's exactly what Twitch is. Mm -hmm. It's like when you sit around, watch your friends, and you can be the backseat gamer too. You're always like, do it the wrong way. Oh, you suck. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Or uh, I, I used to do it. what we would do is I wanted to play uh, Last of Us really badly, and it's a console yeah. game that's way above my skill level. And so I would play and play, and basically my playing would be walking around through the story, and then I'd get stuck and hand the controller to Kyle, and I would watch, <laughs> and he would get frustrated and rage quit, and then I'd hand the controller to our other roommate, Brian, and then he'd play, and eventually I'd get to watch some more story. 
<laughs> and like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh crap, Brian, we gotta walk from here to there. Here, give it to Jenny. <laughs> and she would do a beautiful job. And I would walk, and I would move boards. She around. would like strut. She would like strut. Like she made the character in Last of Us strut. Like it was amazing. All the zombies were like, damn, girl. But I could feel it was like, nuts. like I would have to find a board to put a board somewhere to walk to the second level, and I could feel like Brian and Kyle sitting on the couch, just like clawing their face. Oh. I'm like, Jenny, it's over. It's on the left. Pick it up. No, the triangle button. We're like this is, we're like this is more stressful than the game. <laughs> and I would drop the board, and it was like watching somebody play. Uh, what is that game? Quelp. Yeah, Quop. Oh, Quop. Quop. Yeah, QWOP. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Watch somebody play Quop for like Brilliant. five minutes and you're like, how can you not do this? And then you get on, you're like, oh, oh, I can't do it either. See, this is why you should, you, this is why you should stream games either. more often because it was almost like you were streaming a game except like everyone in your chat had a microphone. Like me and Brian were just constantly like yeah. yelling at you. Yeah. If yeah. you're streaming, you can still kind of get your peace and quiet and stay focused and like just look over to the right and there's all your the advice you need and it's all quiet. Yeah, you know? it's nice. My mom actually, we, we made her into a gamer because like throughout most of my uh, gaming, she wasn't she didn't really play, and only for about six six to eight years now, I would say she's hardcore. Like she plays Battlefield, she was tenth prestige in Call of Duty, and wow. she played Battlefield like all day every day. And uh, before then, she was just totally intimidated, you know, look up in the sky type of playing. Um, but now it's like it's a whole bribe thing. Like she has the same difficulty where it's like this boss is hard, cat, and I'm like okay. Make me dinner and I'll be the boss, you know. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so there's like a lot of training going on. Um, but yeah, I, I totally like when my mom starts playing though, and and she's stuck on the part. I get so frustrated. I like I become this weird abusive person. I know. I'm like, who is this girl? I don't know this girl. But yeah, it's like, why do you? Why? Why? Like, <laughs> like it's so simple. You know, it's just a jump, jump. Oh, stuff like that. So that's fun. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely it's it's fun to go through those moments, uh, especially because I know a lot of people's parents don't really play games, so it's it's fun to to see somebody develop. Like first she started playing pinball, which is just like right and left trigger, mm -hmm. and then she moved on to doing harder things like uh, terrorist hunt. Instead of fighting PVP, she went AI, so that way she got comfortable. And then once she got comfortable with that, then we moved her into doing the PVP online and wow. Uh, then I, then I'd hear funny conversations of like, yeah, I'm a girl. <laughs> That's, so, yeah. I, I'm actually blown away that you were able to teach your mom like how to play an FPS, like a modern day FPS. Like, yeah, she got into it, you know? She just naturally games are addicting, right? That's impressive. So, but st even yeah. then, even then, like, I don't think with all the training in the world I could ever get my mom to, like, learn that. Like, I think the furthest I could get my mom is, like, probably Prop Hunt in Team Fortress 2. <laughs> I could, she could probably get her to do Prop Hunt, but anything beyond that, sorry. Jenny, didn't you say that you got your grandma plays, or...? Oh, no, my mom, actually. Your mom? Um, I... I didn't play a lot of games when I was younger. I did play the first version of uh, Warcraft, World of War, or yeah, Warcraft. So I played the original Warcraft and Warcraft 2, and I would play with her all the King's Quest games, which mm -hmm. were kind of an early uh, puzzle game, and then uh, we played Myst together as well. And um, that was an interesting game because it just plunked you down in a world with no explanation, no direction, and you would have to go around and find clues to your next thing and eventually the objective we would become apparent to you and you would move to the next place but it was a lot of just open world exploring and then you know trying to figure out what you were doing and you were there completely alone you know there were no secondary characters you're, you're always alone by yourself <laughs> which is a little alienating and that was a really challenging game but um yeah my mom still plays a fair bit of tablet games now and i'd really like to get her into um hearthstone because I think she would really enjoy that. She doesn't. She has a Wii. Um, she doesn't play PC games anymore. But mostly, I think that's the limitations of the system that they have. Right. And um, but she does play some tablet games that I think that Hearthstone would be a, like really natural progression for her. But yes. she would definitely get into it. Yeah, it's not hard to understand too. A lot of people, you know, it's just like because card games have been around forever, mm -hmm. and I, I think Hearthstone's a simplified version of that. So. Definitely right. a good idea. So you said that you had you've beaten Dying Light and you're playing H one Z one, which is you know been buggy a bit. Uh, <laughs> it's an alpha, so like 
I don't know. I even I paid to be an alpha too, which is like a new thing for me. But you pay twenty bucks to be an alpha. Yeah, I know? saw that like, on the website. I'm like, oh. I'm like they're taking my money already. Uh, already, what? they already want my money. Hmm. Yeah, I know, <laughs> uh, especially for how buggy it is. But um, but yeah, there's this you know zombie games are still alive and well or undead and well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, H1Z1 is um, what people are comparing to uh, Daisy. Yeah, and you run around. And um, it's the same feeling of like you're alone until you finally run into someone. And then it's always like the first thing you have to say is, I'm friendly, I'm friendly. And <laughs> Otherwise, they'll shoot you and take your loot, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. it's. And, it's... And, and people are already hacking it because I guess it was a planet side engine. So people already learned how to hack into that. Mm -hmm. So you'll run into a town all of a sudden just die out of nowhere. And it's frustrating. But, um, you know, it's an alpha. So, like, you know, the whole thing's warning. Like, this is a build. We, this is us getting your feedback so we can make it the perfect game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had quite a few laughs, though. Because when you do meet up with people, and then, you know, somebody in the group of five decides, well, I just want to randomly kill someone now because I'm bored. And then everybody freaks out and starts running around like cockroaches and <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet. Any time you approach a stranger and you're like, "Well, wait, don't kill me," the, the the first thought going through their minds, which granted, the chances are they're it's a dude. They're like, "Wait, is that a girl? Was that a girl on the microphone?" Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. they're like, "I'm not gonna kill her. I'm with a girl now." Like, I bet it's like this, like, "Oh my god, I found a girl." It's like rarer than finding like you know food or like a, a weapon <laughs> in the game. Even I did that. Even I did that because I found another girl, and I'm like, "Oh, a girl." And, I like, was naturally just kind of like, you know, and then she did not trust us. There was five of us and one of her, and she's just like, okay, well, you guys are sketchy, so I'm going to run along. <laughs> and I like, literally like, so. You're like, no, I'm not like, sketchy, I'm not, I swear. I know. I got her on Twitch and everything, and I like linked her Twitch in the chat, and then you're like, it went all, it was all fun from there on out. But yeah, it's, it's quite funny, because it's like, I think a lot of that comes to the social interaction, and, um, yeah, some people like they don't care you're a girl either. They're just like, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it, it is it is fun having that dynamic when you do meet people and you know I, I go about like harassing the guys on there too. I'm like, yeah, what's up? You know, can we have babies? We gotta continue the species because they're zombies <laughs> and now we gotta keep going. <laughs> they're like, can we do that in this game? Yeah, that they're a... all guys though, so it's very awkward. Which key is that? <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, it was like five of you and one of me. Just hold on, rewind. <laughs> Um, so with <coughs> Dying Light, had, did you play any of the Left 4 Dead series? Yes, yes. How did you feel like those two games compared um, to each other? I felt that it had um, the the same type of zombies from Left 4 Dead were mm -hmm. in this game. Like you know, there was like a spitter and then one that explodes yeah. and. Um, and then what's cool about this game though is that they have like you can have an invasion and you can either have it during the day during the night or during both or never. And it's when you make your game like online. And what happens is one guy comes in as a hunter and he comes in to fight your team and it turns into Left 4 Dead. He comes in to try to kill your team and you have to go around killing his egg spawns so that he eventually dies. And uh, most people turn it off because it takes away you being able to do the main quest. Mm -hmm. So like you can't continue the main storyline. Uh, but yeah, I did it a couple of times and you just freak out because you're like, oh god, who is this person? And then you, run <laughs> and you have to work as a team and you have to use your UV light to stop the guy from jumping on you. And the game's beautiful too and it, it runs really smooth. So um, yeah, I definitely give props to them for, for making it a really nice game. Awesome. Definitely. How are the how are the graphics in um, H one Z one? I mean, they're they're kind of like they're not exactly dying like quality, right? They're like oh, more on Minecraft, baby. Minecraft. Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. So so I've heard. So so obviously we all know that there are like a bunch of quirks and it's kind of buggy with uh, with the alpha. But do you think yeah. in the future it'll get beta? <laughs> okay. so, I'm Are sorry. you making a bad so, joke? Yeah, I, made, I had to make wow. a really bad pun. So <laughs> Someone asked so me to make a pun. I'm sorry. I'm an opportunist, so I saw I saw a window. I had to go. I had to take it. <laughs> it's definitely gonna. It can only get better from here, you know. So, there you yeah, go. We'll thanks for playing along. We'll see. Um, <laughs> thanks for the pity laugh, Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> Kyle, you're so funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she lagged too. I tried. Like, Wait, that was a. That was a joke. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to re I want to re rewind that. You're just like this, and you just like slow turn to me. Like, <laughs> did you really just say that? Like, I don't know if you're making a joke right now or just. I don't know. Like, I barely Jenny, remember alpha beta. I don't Jenny know how you remember know alpha beta. 
<laughs> no, like beta. You know, it goes from alpha, and the, then the game gets taken to beta, and then. And then you were saying the game's gonna get better. Yeah, I was but saying no. the game's gonna get like better. better, like Word better. Play. Oh, Word better. Play. Yeah. Oh, now See, now it's funny. Wow. I thought you were making a joke about an old drugstore. Like, no. That was just like. <laughs> it was like before my time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like. I barely remember that. How do you know that? <laughs> 90s joke or like 80s joke? <laughs> uh. Kyle wasn't alive yet. Joke. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me, please. <laughs> Oh. Uh, anyway, anyway, I um, should we do some questions on Twitter right now? I would love to. Absolutely. All right, sweet. Um, so, guys, again, you guys know our Twitter handles. They are listed about, and uh, as well as Cats, hers is Mystic Gun, Mystic with a K, and Gun with two N's. And I'm Gearhead Girl twenty seven. Tweet at any of us. I think yeah. somebody. I think I'll start off with someone's uh, tweet to me. What is everyone's favorite console? And why? So, like, exclusive titles, better hardware, etc. Um, so, I'll, I'll just start this one off. I've always said that if PC gaming weren't around, um, I'd probably get a PS4 just to satisfy my FPS cravings that I, I tend to have. Um, FPSs are pretty much my favorite game, and I think they have a lot of good content, um, a lot of good exclusives for that, as well as the hardware being slightly better than Xbox One. Um, I'm not sure if that's like a huge noticeable difference in user experience, but I'm always I'm always down for for better it hardware. Is Netflix. What's that? I, I have a PS4 and an Xbox One, and um, it definitely is noticeable in like nice. Netflix. Okay. Which is weird. interesting. But, interesting. But yeah, like Netflix does not have that like 1080p. On Xbox. Oh. And, um, hmm. Yeah, and I do like the menus better on PlayStation 4. I feel that they're quicker and they're more concise as opposed to Xbox. It's like a Windows 8 PC like overlay, like right. a, a shell of Windows 8. Yeah. And like getting like it's so it sucks because you go from 360, which was smooth and like invited all your friends, to now having this Windows 8 like oh, loading an app to load an app up? to load an app and yep. you know, that kind of yep, stuff. Yep, absolutely. And th these are all things that have to be considered oh. with video game consoles now. Just not just the games, but the user interface and you know all how the apps work because they've evolved to something so much more than just something that plays video games. Right? There's so many different yeah. things that you can do on them now. So everything must be considered. Uh, I mean, they're basically little HTPCs, if you will. You know, little entertainment center things now. My, so. yep. my console would be the Wii U. That would be my second pick. And the that's Wii because U. of the exclusive titles. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. How freaking fun all of them are. We <laughs> use we use like the because like Wii oh U. Oh my god. Nintendo, I feel like still their their theology or whatever still believes in like getting people in the same room to play a game. Yeah. Family you know what games, I mean? Family, family, family friend oriented. Family games, friend oriented, <laughs> but it's like it just, yeah. you, it gives you a feeling of nostalgia. Like when we would play Mario Kart 8 yeah. in the other yeah. room and we were all yeah. just like sitting on the couch huddled shoulder to shoulder. It's like a different experience that you can never get like when you're sitting at, at home alone gaming with your friends, even though, you know, they've got them all on, on VoIP and stuff. Right. It's just, uh. It, I've still enjoyed though, like, hours of <laughs> fun time by myself playing Super Mario World. Oh yeah, of course. And I'm going to shove my mic over people are saying I'm low. Uh, oh, are you? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Just do your thing. Do your <laughs> thing. Right, well, do your thing, girl. Um, <laughs> so I, I enjoy those titles and also Nintendo, I feel like they really did the nostalgia thing right. It's something that um, like Square Enix has not been able to get it together with and meeting people's demand for a freaking Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh! Can you believe that announcement? That was hilarious, I was right? embarrassed for them. Like there's right? a word in like German that means I am like... embarrassed on the behalf of you. That's what I felt right then. <laughs> yes, I know, that was hilarious. That hasn't been the best conference disappointment failfish ever. Oh, the faces of the people though, like they were just like, when when they saw like the Final Fantasy, you know, screen come up and the music playing, they just all lost their minds. And then you just watched it just kind of gradually wash <laughs> Out of their faces. <laughs> oh my so god, bad. that's so. That, that must be so hard to watch. Oh, no. I don't want to see that video. Oh, oh no. Yeah, so hopefully, there like. There memes, everything was made, man. <laughs> maybe if I get it right with PlayStation 5, I don't, I don't know. But I'm not assuming, like Kyle is, that there isn't a, a, a PC around to play a game on. Yeah. So if, if in that world, I would probably also pick the PlayStation 4 um, just for the variety of games. And there mm -hmm. are a lot of other titles that are platformers that I enjoy as much, like the Raymond Legend games um, that I could play. But just for sheer, like Kyle said, like the campfire feeling, I feel like Nintendo has it with 
they they still have the campfire and everybody wants to gather yeah. around the campfire. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate that. What about you? If if there was no other, if all you could have is a console, what console would you have? Man, like I've been an Xbox person for most, like because the Halo, like you said, exclusive titles are what draw you, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I hate to deter away from that because it was like it's been a huge part of my career and all that. But I've been so disappointed with the Xbox One and like I said, that Windows 8 shell. Mm -hmm. um, and I totally agree on the Wii on the Wii aspect, but um, I'm I'm such an FPS person at heart that I would definitely have to go with the PlayStation. Um, I don't play enough on the PlayStation because I have I have a cool deal with Xbox. Okay, so here's the thing. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my parents, I don't right. This is a trick. It's about to get juicy. All right. It's, it's, a, it's a buy one, get two copies of a game. Okay, so um, I know, right? So my parents play everything that I usually play. And what they have, they have a setting on Xbox called the home box. And what you do is generally you, you have your one Xbox, it becomes your home box. And anytime you download something or whatever, it's always uploaded to your home box. So uh, my parents have dedicated their Xbox to being the home box. So whenever I buy a game, they get to play it right away. So if I buy, like I um, just, what did I buy? Anytime I buy, like, download content or anything, it literally downloads right away. And they don't even have Xbox Gold anymore. So they use my home Xbox has Xbox Live Gold, and they now get to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly my parents that are like, buy this game so I can play it. And <laughs> Wow. What about yeah. your freeloaders your parents are? Freeloaders. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> OK, so we have a couple Gotta other make questions. Them. OK. Uh, this one from uh, Ryan uh, DTW. He keeps asking us about Patriots or Seahawks, and I had to Google what he meant. I'm sorry, dude. Like, I didn't even know tomorrow was the Super Bowl until somebody told me oh, they damn. couldn't make it hiking on Sunday. They're like, oh, no, I got Super Bowl plans. I was like, oh, yeah, that's happening. What's that? <laughs> no, I mean, I know what Super wow, Bowl is. Well, if you didn't even tell me that, I would have been like, well, Patriots or Seahawks, I, I will always choose human life over an animal. <laughs> so, like, that's, that's how much of a nerd I am. I don't, I, don't even, uh, I don't even Super Bowl. All right, and then Steve sent me Seahawks. some. Steve has been uh, cutting and pasting some over here for us, so let me, let me <clears throat> bring some of those up. Did you uh, know that the Seattle audience, though, for the Seahawks, <laughs> they get so loud and... and and like rumble the ground and everything cheering uh -huh. that they actually make the Richter scale go off like there's an earthquake because wow. they're so supportive. Oh yeah, That's I was cool. in Seattle a lot last time when they were in the Super Bowl and it was insane. Like they, their their support for their team is absolutely insane. Well, wow. cool. Get some out of the house that, and into the bars. That says something. Like they have they have the <laughs> impact of a natural disaster. <laughs> Like, I, I heard a lot of undertone there, Jenny. I, I heard what you're saying. I try to <laughs> ignore it. I was at a bar, and it got nuts in the bar. One half of the bar was like, see, and the other half was like, hawks. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, can I get my beer, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Frozen Radiator asks, uh, is Cat Gun in the USA? Am I in the Palm, USA? Palmdale is like the Can't USA. In the it's, USA. It's just not like a part of the USA that's in California. It's like a part of the USA that's in Texas. It somehow what? got picked oh, yeah, up yeah, yeah. and like, like carried I, I from the I south and dropped off in LA County. <laughs> Uh, no, Jenny and I, we're, we're Palmdale sisters, like, um, it's very hard to find... Palmdaleans, what? Yeah, 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 It's very hard to find people from out here, especially that are into the kind of stuff we're into. So, um... So is this yeah, what, Palmdale, is this what Palmdale, is this what the desert and Palmdale does to you? Like, you live there long enough and you Ooh. just become a recluse, like, gamer? <laughs> Watch this. And you're just like, this. there's really nothing to do Ready? outside of these walls. It's, All right. Cat. There you go. You see that? Whoa. Wow. There you go. That should help explain what's going on. Is that, Palmdale. Is that green screen? How does how did you get that up there so fast? Uh, it's my out my window. See, there's that sexy yep. new age PC over there, and then there's sexy. the outside. Wow, I would I would game all day too if I lived there. <laughs> so for you folks who are at home and wondering what Los Angeles looks like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, people pay to visit this place. <laughs> LA. LA that's so LA cool. County. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Out in the middle of nowhere. I'll try to make this a quick story. Um, I ran into a, a couple when I was up visiting uh, my aunt and uncle who live in the Pacific Northwest up in, in Washington on the Olympic Peninsula. And they right. owned a uh, nursery. And they asked me where I was from. And I told them, oh, I'm from Palmdale. And they're like, no. What high school did you go to? And I told them. And they were like, no. And apparently some recruiters from my high school went up there and showed them this video. Move to the beautiful Antelope Valley. Be close to Hollywood and movie stars and all this stuff. So they signed a two-year contract to go teach for this high school and moved down to Boston. Was this video made like 30 years ago? <laughs> when there was like... A, a tree or two, at least, in Palmdale? There's never Jeez. been trees in Palmdale except Joshua. It's a desert, Kyle. It's oh not like there gosh. was... It's not it's, like the Lorax the lifted desert. Lorax, like, yeah. and everybody came in and mowed them down. It's just, it's always wow. been that way. The best way to explain it is, you know when you're going to Las Vegas and there's nothing but desert? That's Palmdale. Or yeah, Palmdale's just it. like it. Well, Palmdale, we're still considered L.A. County because we're an hour north of L.A., <coughs> uh, but we're, like, the last place, you know, you go mm -hmm. to get there. And uh, people use this as an alternative to have a cheaper place to stay because you can have a house out here for the price of an apartment in LA, mm -hmm. um, but they do the commute. You know, they take an hour. It takes like, you know, rush hour takes two to three hours to get down to LA, but um, it's worth it when you can have a nicer place living up here. You guys can't consider yourselves LA County. That's like cheating. Yeah, right. Right. I'm just saying that that seems wrong. That's like saying I'm related to Brad Pitt because he's got an adopted child that's Asian. Well, you know, you are. I mean, look at you. I always call oh, it. Oh, I always oh call stop, cat! Oh, you're such a doll. Oh. I always call it the honky tonk of Los Angeles. The County. honky tonk. There you the go. The honky tonk. There you go. Yeah. Honky tonk, good. LA. All right. Anyways. Do I have um, fast internet? Oh yeah, internet's fast. Wheels <laughs> would Blazing. like to. Wheels TechBench TV would like to ask, what is your favorite ATX full-sized case, no price limit, uh, in-win S-frame. <laughs> <laughs> You're all f you're all form and no function. Yep. <laughs> but there is a lot of airflow in that case. You have to. <laughs> well, because it's completely open. Uh, let me let me pull up a pic of the Inwin S frame. I'm so indecisive. I can't even decide like what my favorite full ATX case is. Um, I always go back to the original one that I built my first system in, which is the 600T. Uh huh. Um, I still love it. Um, I still have a system built in it right now, and it's it's never given me any problems. I mean, other than the fan controller blowing up, this that's not be that's folks. beyond uh, the spec of the case. I mean, you still see Corsair cases these days, like the 780T, for example, or the 750D, that are still using the exact same basic internal layout uh, as the 600T is, and uh, I really respect the case for that. It's very much held its own, which uh, just kind of indicates it was kind of a uh, innovative case for its time. And it looks pretty sick. Case right there? It that looks like a stormtrooper. That's, that's one I would like to have. There are 1,500 of these cat, and they they're about 850 dollars. Damn. It's made of one con it's one continuous piece of rolled aluminum, and each one has to be hand bent. There's no manufacturing process like machine that can make <laughs> these. Wait, it's hand bent? They're they're bent. By a, oh, yeah. a human being by uses a, a bender and bends each one of these by hand. What? Damn. It's like Avatar the Last Steel Bender. <laughs> you have to ha you have some superpowers to bend that, don't you? I mean, they have tools, right? I well, he said no price limit. <laughs> you see him like you bending it against a desk no like, ah, this is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> You can't, yeah. you can't tell a woman no price limit and then not expect us to go with the Harry Winston of cases, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have That's a point actually, there. That's pretty cool looking. That's pretty cool looking. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, uh, our very own Game Crate, our very own sister company that does gaming and stuff, are asking how old your parents are, Kat. Apparently you fascinated... Uh, some of us with your Salazar. parents. Salazar. I see, I see Salazar asking. Yes, Q. Um, he's, he's one of our, uh, our buddies over at Game Crate. Uh, yeah, I, my parents, my dad just turned, <laughs> my dad just turned 59, she's easy to please, uh, he just turned 59 in December, yeah. and uh, my mom is turning the big 60 uh, this year, on April 10, April 10. Have, have either of them, have either of them got the night runs yet? The night runs, no, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. Uh, that means the they're healthy. Moves. We have a nephew, so siblings. they might get questioned for that when they go get diapers at the store, but no, they're fine. Nice, <laughs> that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, but they're about to level up to level 60, so it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> cool. Ding. 
Uh, someone's asking, since uh, what is your favorite gaming memory? They're just asking us what our favorite everything is now. Um, uh, that's okay. Gaming branded memory? What's your favorite gaming memory, Cat? Like, I played a lot of EverQuest. I don't know if you guys ever played MMO, the EverQuest. MMO. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. I totally took that out of context, and I was about to say, well, anything DDR3 works. I swear to God, I thought he was talking about like computer, like RAM, like he RAM may have memory. Been. Gaming um, memory? Sam Squatch 1994? No. Are you talking about <laughs> computer memory or memory generated <laughs> computer At this games? point, it could totally mean <laughs> either. <laughs> <That's tech nerd>. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was thinking, I was like, well, AMD, the Radeon gaming series line of DDR3 is really good. <laughs> Low profile. And then you're like, well, you know, back I, in the I day. I have to think I'm that like, Kingston HyperX is also very good. <laughs> is it? As soon as you started talking about like way back in the day, I'm like, that memory's pretty outdated, cat. I don't know if anyone's gaming on that. <laughs> I'm. They don't have the EverQuest memory. <laughs> yeah. Back in '95. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. All right. So, what was your favorite memory from playing a game? Yes. Cat. Let's go I with think that that's one. What he meant. Let's go. With, let's go with that. <laughs> HyperX on the first one, uh, yeah. EverQuest on the second. Um, but yeah, EverQuest to me was a, a game like MMO. It was harder. It was back before games became a lot easier. Uh, it was more, much more hardcore. And uh, I remember a moment where it felt so real that uh, there was this cliff, and I walked up to it, and I almost fell in. Because if you fall in, you die. You have to retrieve your corpse. You lose all your items, so on and so forth. And it was like a high level area. And I like look over the court, look over the cliff, and I like hit. Up a little too much, and I like literally got scared, kind of jumped a little bit. But it's like little little moments like that that just like literally where game gives you adrenaline or it gives you the feels um, yeah. or the runs, you know, whatever. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, like well in playing, like competitively for me, obviously, it's just having that adrenaline rush and having that that um, that mental like, oh, can I outsmart them? Can I outdo them? Can you, you know, it's like cool. nice. Yeah. What about you, what Jenny? About you What's your fondest gaming memory? My fondest gaming memory, um, so when my boyfriend and I first started dating, we were long distance, and so we play video games as our date, and he invited me to play Portal 2 co-op with him. And the first night that we played co-op together, I think that was like, it was my best date I'd ever been on, and it was also <laughs> oh. my favorite computer game. Memory. He's your companion cube. How yeah. Cute. <laughs> um, it's because we had these little robots and we, we learned how to like high five each other. <laughs> I would think Portal would break up relationships, you know, because you're just like, go over there and put the portal in. Oh my god, let me tell you, I was I was just about to follow up with that statement. Like, if you ever want to know if like you and another person are meant for each other, go play Portal mm -hmm. 2 together co-op. And like it's like it's something that every couple should have to go through before they get married. Is like <laughs> yeah, get through like Portal Two, oh, man. I swear to God, because there's so much communication involved, and the fact that like you're you know you're not sitting in the same room means like you just have your words and you have to communicate and talk it all out. And it's it's intense. It's totally. a good. If, if anybody wants to know if, relationship if that building. relationship has any traction under it, yeah. <laughs> play Portal Two. Holy moly. <laughs> if you make it, you make it to the end of that, you're good. Because <laughs> there there were nights when we'd get like a half an hour in and I'd just be like, you know what, I, I'm good. I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> I, I actually tried playing, I actually tried playing uh, Portal 2 once with my fiance for a while. It didn't last long. Um, I was like, I would get super stressed out. Like first couple levels, right? The relationship right? didn't last long? No, 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 the game, the game. We're, we're still engaged, still on the, okay. still on the right track. Okay. But I just remember, like, it, it pointed out, it helped me point out, like, so many flaws with how I communicate with her sometimes, because after you get to a certain point and the levels start getting more difficult, you really have to, like, coordinate, right? And timing's really important. So I just found myself, like, ordering her around and, like, commanding her. Just, like, just do my bidding, woman! <laughs> just do what I tell you! And there was no, like, all right, let's, let's do this together. It kind of just felt like I was pushing her. And uh, it was like, wow, I'm I'm an asshole. I'm a total. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Portal Two, she never for just calling like, my calling out my she crap. She never just like didn't listen to you and then smashed you in a compactor or something. Well, eventually she would just sit there, and I'm sure if like the avatar could like cross its arms, it would have been. <laughs> you know, she was not too happy. <laughs> but yeah, good times. That's a well, good memory. What's your favorite? Video Man, game? um. You know, I know there's a couple big ones out there that, but nothing's really coming to mind. I'd say like just overall, um, just back in the day when N64 was still around, uh -huh. and that was the the new big thing. 
I remember just going over to my, my friend's house or they would all come over to my house and we would just literally just surround the TV and just game for like eight hours at a time. And we would play um, Super Smash Brothers on the original 64, which uh, then went on to become my favorite game of all time, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um, a lot of fond memories playing that, and uh, as well as like GoldenEye, like the original GoldenEye for N64, um, when split screen was still a thing. Um, you know, I guess besides Wii U and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, just just getting together, I guess, like childhood memories. A lot of my, my gaming memories, because that's where like I, I first started pick, picking up gaming was you know my dad brought me the original NES for like my fifth birthday or something like that, and um, started playing Mario Brothers three, like all the old school games, Metroid, the original Metroid. And have been hooked ever since, and uh, you know, try try to make time for it now when I can. Paul wants to know if we can uh, start over from the beginning. <laughs> Paul, you are denied. <laughs> denied. I'm sorry, Paul. You should have been here. You should have been here from the beginning. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, and I think I'll, I'll grab one more question from this one that. Um, that Steve put up. It is from Nick Heller asking, "What headphones is Kyle using?" These are Steel Series. Are these the Siberian ones? No, those. No, are these funk. are Funk. These are not Steel Series. These are Funk heads. This is a Funk headset. I don't even know what model this is. Do you know? It's uh, the H four six. H one Z ones. H one Z ones. These are the Zombie Edition <laughs> Funk headset. <laughs> I don't know, it's uh, pretty H, nice though. Uh, H260. H260? HS260. HS260. They're very Headset comfy. 260. I will say they're very comfy. A little big for my liking, but they're they're fairly light and uh, they work. Yeah, the ear cups on those are like having your head sandwiched between two sofa cushions. I know, it is. It's yeah. literally like you stuck your face in the couch. It's like my, head's, you know, my kid, head is in a lazy the boy. They should just call these the funk lazy boys. Did you ever try to hide and stick your face in the couch when you were a kid? No, not really. <laughs> I always She's a little ostrich over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Anytime Jenny encountered a tough situation, just like head in the couch. Yeah, that's that's a thing. I I would get mad at my brother, and instead of just screaming at the top of like, my lungs because I could be quite loud, and my parents forbade me from doing that. I would just stick my face between two couch cushions and scream. If only if only you had this headset back then, you'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, multi-purpose. <laughs> Good for every occasion. Uh, all right. So, do we have anything else here? Uh, Taking some of the last questions. Yeah, go ahead and be sure to keep tweeting at us, guys, or ask in the Twitch chat. Don't be shy. Uh, Don't be shy. Nicholas Lyons asks, "Why did you start gaming?" Cat. Oh. Why? Why, why did I start? Um, it was a natural thing in my family. Uh, they had, uh, when I was yay high, maybe about six years old, um, my dad owned a karmic card store called No Weasels. And okay. um, through that, it was like we had a background where you could rent out any system to play. We had a pinball machine. Uh, we had laser discs. Do you remember laser discs? Um, What's a laser disc? <laughs> oh, where the hell was I when this was happening? It's basically a boom, Still boom, boom, boom. It was a thing, man. It's like a game? It's like a games on it's the disc? It's a DVD, but there was like... It's they were as big as a, an DVD. LP. They were like... Yeah. This it, was, it was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we had we sold laser discs and, and a bunch of card games. Like my brother played Magic Gathering, and so did I. And naturally through that, um, just kind of got into gaming. And then my parents use gaming as... Stop it, Jaraxxus. I'm going to mute you in a sec. Sorry, that's my text tone. It's a Hearthstone thing. It's oh, I thought you just had a <laughs> robot under your desk or something. <laughs> you face Jaraxxus. Uh, but yeah, they kind of used it as a mentoring system where, like, when I'd get online or play with my siblings, they would use it as a way to be, you know, like... First of all, it's the best babysitter, playing Mario Kart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but when I started getting on Xbox Live and stuff, I'd be just as vicious as some of these online trolls, and I'd be like, screw you! And they'd be like, cat. Uh-uh. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One <laughs> like, day I'm going to have my own streaming channel, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And then I'm, like, parenting her now. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> they know you're a girl. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, that's, that's probably why I got into gaming, just naturally through family. Nice. How about you, Jenny? I got into playing video games because Kyle was embarrassed <laughs> to know me. 
What? <laughs> what does that mean? The first, like, when I started working here, I had never played Mario, I, the original <laughs> Mario, ever, because <laughs> video game consoles were the devil to my parents, and I wasn't allowed uh, to have them when I was a kid, or play them, or play with people who had them, or go to their houses. Right. And so when we became roommates, and uh, Brian, our other roommate, they were like, we're gonna play Smash Brothers, and damn it, Jenny, you're gonna play Smash Brothers too. Yeah, whereas whereas gaming came naturally to you and your family, we literally forced yeah. gaming down Jenny's throat, like against her will, like, and made her play until she liked it. We're like, you're gonna like it. You're gonna have fun. And then we, it was like homework. It was like an hour, three times a week. You're gonna play Smash Brothers until you're good at something. So I'm only yeah. good at Peach, because this is the only character. I'm good at Peach. <laughs> but then I started, like, I wanted to build my own. Obviously, working here, you can't help but, like, have it rub off on you. And whereas, mm -hmm. like, I'm really big on the hardware stuff, you know, any kind of technical, anything I can build with my hands, I'm all about it. So I was like, okay, I want to build a computer. And I'm like, all right, I built a computer. Now I have to do something with that computer. What can I do? Yeah. I can play video games. Okay. So, yep. yeah, so then I, I just... Really, I yes. think a lot of people have that. that that's that definitely, especially like you know, now it's the norm to be the whole nerd like gaming thing, right? The mm -hmm. whole esports, but back then, yeah, it's the stereotype of like, no, games are a waste of time and you should be outside playing games or like outside playing real life games, whatever those are. I don't know, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that must you know, it's, it's good they converted you, but I could totally see that R real life <laughs> games like the Super Bowl, <laughs> like, like sports ball, what. No, I, I'm actually, I like hockey. Um, I like watching hockey. I love it live, especially ice hockey. So yeah. there are some things. Who's your team? Who's your team? Uh, I don't have one at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do favorites. <laughs> I root for everyone. Uh, I used to be a Colorado Avalanche uh, fan, but that that uh, went away. Uh, when, um, so default to Kings, man. You're in LA. Kings. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Like, you're in LA, you have to be a Kings fan. And they're yeah. less embarrassing now because they've got a, you know, a Stanley Cup under them. So the Ducks continue to be a hit and miss with me. Like, their goalie is so phenomenal, it's hard to not be a fan. But every game I go to, they lose. So I'm like, guys, eh, come on. And, <laughs> and both times that I went to a game, a Ducks game last year, they lost by a margin that was embarrassing like I was like is there a mercy rule in hockey because I'm about to just walk out of here this is bad so many good movies wasted on them such a shame <laughs> that's what I was thinking as soon as she said that I'm like quack quack, quack. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't do that at the stadium anymore I learned people kind of look at you uh, you're learning yourself and you're like Quack, quack, oh, this quack, is. I'm quack. I'm the only one quacking. This is not okay. Okay. Oh, never mind. Uh, what about you, Kyle? Oh, why did I get into games? Um, yeah. pretty much naturally, just like you, uh, Cat. Where it was just kind of natural in my family. Um, mostly on my dad's side, he was a huge gamer when he was a kid, like at the arcades, right? He would um, oh. he would tear it up on the on like the original Donkey Kong and. Yeah. Uh, Asteroids and Tempest and stuff like that. So he grew up around that whole environment. He was kind of a nerd himself back in the day. So, you know, naturally, I guess when he had me, and he had me at a fairly young age and stuff. Um, so I think he was still in that mind frame, like I want to pass this on to my kid. You know, like right. I had so much fun playing games growing up. I want him to experience it too. And I just, I think he just wanted to see my reaction. You know, like for the first time playing a video game. And I think that was really cool for him. And obviously, uh, you know, great for me. Um, I got hooked from day one. I was glued to the the video games ever since. You know, mm -hmm. mom mom would always try to peel me away from the TV during dinner time and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, uh, she was supportive. You know, she would buy me like the next gen console that would come out and stuff for my birthday or for Christmas. Um, and uh, I think I think that's that's why I got into it. Yeah, nice. That's it. Yeah. Was Pokemon your favorite? I played the crap out of Pokemon. Um, nice. Red, red version. I was a red version guy on the original Game Boy. I remember she got me a Game Boy for Christmas. I wanted a Game Boy so bad, and she got me like the coolest one. It was like uh, it was like lime green, but it was like see through, so you could see like the PCB inside and like all the circuitry. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's so cool. And then and then they came out with Game Boy Color like a day later. 
Or like I had, or I had found out that they had just released Game Boy Color like a day before Christmas, and then I was like, I hate it. I hate this thing. And I was like, it's red version. I can't even see any red. And so I had her exchange it for an ugly purple one, but it had color, and so I was happy. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Who was your first Pokemon you picked? Uh, no, actually, I was. Um, I went uh, Squirtle. I was a Squirtle Squirt guy. Yeah. Squirtle? Yep, right. dude. He, me and Squirtle, we we, we were we went through some crap, you know. Um, War Turtle. It was great seeing him grow up, and then being at Blastoise's graduation was just like I couldn't feel any more proud. Really. All right, I think we have time for a few more questions. If you guys want to shoot them to us, yes. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll squeak. Shoot, shoot, so shoot. Frozen Radiator. Did you? Did you put it in the thing? Yeah, it's like second to the top. There. That's a question? Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Did you put it in the frozen? <laughs> yes. I'm trying my best to be mature with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Only Steve understands me. Okay. Answer carefully. <laughs> um, anyway, Frozen Radiator asks, what internet speeds do you get in the desert, cat? Um, currently, I actually get, I uh, want to say, I can actually do a speed test right now so I know um, what it is at this point. Um, but usually, I want to say it's about 30 down and 5 up. I mean, it's not like, it's doable, right? Yeah. It's not, I think it's my normal. parents are getting right now like 1 down on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. Wow. I built my brother a computer, and I didn't that. install all the drivers at my house. At my house, I was getting 100 down, and it was like, you just take it for granted after a while, having really good internet. So I um, I brought the computer up there without all of the drivers installed, and it took three and a half hours to download one driver, and I ended up bringing the computer home with me, finishing uninstalling the drivers, and then bringing it back. Because I couldn't do it. Terexus agrees. Yep. <laughs> All right, he's been muted. Um, <laughs> actually, it's twice, it's twice as good as I thought. Okay, so it's 100, it's 100 down and 10 up. 100 so. down, 10 up. Who's your provider? That's what do I'm on. Do you have Verizon or do you have Time, time Warner? Time Warner, for sure. Time, time Warner, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to um, try to get time my Warner back to switch. They're supposed to be improving out here. Uh, yeah. Because of that thing is 9 milliseconds. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I've never, I've never had any issues, uh, especially with the new egg computer that, that we just built. Um, everything's just like super fast and smooth. I haven't... Shameless plug. Shameless plug. No, it's serious. Because I, I had an Alienware before that, but it was like six years old. Oh, so, wow. So, um, yeah, trust me. When you when you get that upgrade and you're just like, oh, the internet's already, like, the, the tab loaded. And I don't have to watch everything <laughs> pop up like little pictures. And, um, no, it is. It's nice. That's, that's always, like, a funny feeling you get when you've had a computer for so long that you forget actually how it's supposed to work. And how fast it's supposed to be, and then you boot up like a brand new computer, and you're like, "Whoa, everything just works!" Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what it's supposed yeah. to do. Your com your old computer was crap. And you show it off to your friends or family. You're like, "Look how fast this loads!" Look look yeah, <laughs> press the button, it pops up. It's like look at this YouTube video. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Totally, man. Yeah. Right. Okay. Totally. Brag. Word. Um, AXSB <laughs> asks, "What is your longest gaming session?" <laughs> I'm trying to be mature. I'm so like. You don't have to be. It's what's okay. The, what's the longest you've lasted, Cat? Let's just you know get it out there. <laughs> we're all um, 12. I actually I've streamed probably for 14 hours. I want to say before I usually um, call it, but I, I've I mean you know back in the day when I would play, I've, it's it's those moments where it's like till I sleep, until I get tired enough to feel sleepy. So I would say anywhere from 16 to 20 hours, and until it's more so. Uh, priority to be like, I think my brain needs to sleep more than I want to sleep, so. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. You do get you up and like walk around How? and stretch, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially like even on stream, uh, <laughs> I'll show you my friend, his name is E.T., uh, <laughs> but they all, they all make fun of this, but but like my... my <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is E.T. <laughs> it's my masseuser. Uh, Wally right there. <laughs> Wally, uh, yeah, he, he's very magical because you know I I sit here for such long hours that he's my best friend. Now, now I'm trying to be mature about all this. We're not gonna call it the C word. Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's oh, my that's friend. Hilarious. You guys, uh, I, sh I should probably make.
make a little icon for him for my subs. You should. <laughs> you should. E.T. <laughs> sure, they're, sure they're all very jealous of E.T. Steve's losing his mind. <laughs> yeah, <right there. laughs> Steve's <laughs> lost his mind. <laughs> um, I had a you question, but it's just gone now. Oh, the longest that I've sat and played video games for, probably about four or five hours. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we got a It's we really hard, you know, it's it's actually really hard for me because video game playing was so stigmatized for me growing up yeah. that it it was difficult for me to sit for 30 minutes. Like, I had to work up to five hours because it was actually really hard for me to sit and do anything that wasn't active yeah. for more than an hour. Yeah, like, I can see that. Like, I have trouble watching TV shows. I, I'm just like, I'm always moving. I'm always like perpetually doing something, always moving. Mm -hmm. um, so getting up to like four or five hours was pretty incredible, but it only happened because the game was so good. Yeah. You know, when it's good and you love it, it's like reading your favorite book and you, you just can't put it down and you keep going. Even beyond the like point of mental fatigue. The other thing is too, is that I have this unfortunate, well, not really that unfortunate, I mean, it's much better than a lot of other people's uh, way to spend 40 hours a week. But um, after after a day at work, I get home and you know sometimes I just want to stare at a wall and do nothing. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it really depends on the environment and who I'm gaming with and the game I'm playing. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, like back in the day, I would I would kind of game like like you, cat, like go on for 15 plus hours um, and tear that tear through that pretty quickly because uh, A, I didn't have a job. Um, <laughs> I wasn't you know, fortunate enough to have gaming as my job. Um, so it was just like, well, I, I got nothing better to do and gaming's, gaming's awesome. And like my friends would be there and we would literally just wake up in the morning. Like, you know, you're young, you wake up early. You don't, like, you don't appreciate sleeping in when you're a kid. So you'd wake up at like eight or 7 a.m. And then just like, turn on the N64 or turn on the GameCube <laughs> yep. and just fire it up and just be like, yeah, mom, get me some pizza, make some quesadillas, <laughs> and like just all the way until like four in the morning. Like you almost pull an all-nighter all the way to the next day. And I remember numerous nights uh, where, where we would just pretty much do that and have a blast. Like it was the best. It was such oh, yeah. a very fond memory. Gaming memory the only experience. way you know the time is like the sun would come up and you'd be like, what? Like you look up and all of a sudden, next it, thing you know. Exactly, right. Or you have to like check the time in Animal Crossing. You're like, all right, what day is it, guys, in this uh, in virtual land? Okay, we've been gaming for too long. <laughs> it's time to sleep. But um, uh, there was actually a pretty good question. I know we kind of stopped with the questions, but there was one good one that I thought warrants a good answer. Um, question for all three of us. Um, from True Master Race, how do you guys deal with haters? I'm sure everyone gets trolls. The more popular you become, the more you're susceptible to haters. Do you guys pay attention or ever take it to heart? Oh, we were Good kind question. of actually talking about this. Uh, what a pertinent yeah, question. We, we were talking sweet, about this before Sweden's we. Show, right? Yeah, we there's a show. In, was it in Sweden, right? Yeah, we talked about it, I think, last week on Altab. Uh, there's a show yeah. in Sweden, a um, reality TV show where this guy hunts down internet trolls. Wow! Like mm -hmm. finds their addresses. He's and a goes troll to bounty home hunter. Home and nice. like knocks on the door, like Jay and Silent Bob style. We need one of those so bad. Wow, that's pretty cool. We should we should do yep. that sometimes. Yeah. Unfortunately, like we would get in trouble for like showing up at like thirteen year olds' houses and. I know, right? Just um, shaking them up. <laughs> here's how I deal with it. Um, I take a look at my Twitter followership, and I I like to look at the analytics of my Twitter followership. And I look at it like these, you know, 4,500 or so people who choose to follow me, these are my, like, that is my audience. These people care about me. They care about what I have to say. They're choosing to follow me, bring me into their personal lives on their social media. And I am grateful for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And so, and also 97% of them are male, which isn't really that surprising. Kind of to me, though, since I don't ever really tweet pictures of myself. So I'm kind of like, I don't know what you guys are waiting for. It's never going to happen, but sure. <laughs> um, but I look at them as kind of like like the, like the Steve and Paul and Kyles of, of video games. Like, these are guys I like. I like hanging out with them. My Twitter followers, right. I bet you I could put 20 of them in a room, and we would have a great time hanging out. Yeah. And 
You'd have to cover up the smell, though. Oh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you and Paul and Steve all together in a room don't smell that bad most of the time. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Um, That's surprising. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I I don't really read my comments very often because I look at it as I'm very fortunate to have a huge support group already. So I don't need to go look at the people who are interested in tearing me down. Although I did right. make the mistake of doing that this week on a pro couple projects I was really proud of. Um, for a lot of you probably don't know this, uh, Rachel, our writer, has moved on to Greener Pastures. And she's having a great time doing what she's doing uh, for her new company. But I have picked up the writing uh, at New Egg TV, and I've been writing Yoked now for about two months. And uh, so occasionally I'm really proud of the work I do on that show. And then I go read the comments, and it's like, OK, why did I do that to myself? Because it doesn't, it you know, it might take me 10 hours or 12 hours to put a show together, and it takes one person who watches 30 seconds of it, and they're like, oh, I hate Jenny. She doesn't have any boobs. <laughs> Man. I'm like, okay. But then oh. I remember I've got 4,500 and growing people in my own little personal community who think I'm worthwhile, and I don't really need to give much play to the people who don't. Yeah. That's true. I mean, you you typically look at the overall picture. I mean, if it was like 90, if it was like 50-50, like 50% of all your followers were just talking smack on you, then you have to question yourself as a human being. Like, what am I doing wrong? Everyone hates me. There's there's definitely something up with that. But, you know, for the most part, if you have a general positive feedback uh, or, you know, like to dislike ratio and stuff um, from from your your viewers, then it's like the one or two that occasionally give you a hard time or you know, just talk smack, you just have to realize those are just the odds, right? Not everybody in the world is going to think, you know, you, you, you crap out rainbows. Um, <laughs> and some people will just downright hate you for their own reasons, and that's fine. So, you know, freedom of speech and stuff, right? I mean, I, I never feel the tendency to fire back with a comment or to kind of retaliate or rebuttal. Like, I just, I don't see it worthwhile. Like, I'm just too busy to even bother. You can't teach the internet. <coughs> you can't teach the internet. they got to learn, learn it for themselves. And um, <coughs> the only time I will respond is if someone calls me out for something fact-based, and they say, hey, you called this out wrong in your video, or I don't, I don't think you did this correctly, and I, I have a quantifiable reason for why I did do it, um, I will come back and say, look, this is my rationale behind it. Sorry for the confusion, blah, 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 and I'll kind of explain it. Because that's something that can be argued. Whether or not I'm a poo poo caca head is completely subjective <laughs> and there's no point in me trying to ever prove to someone that I'm not because I don't know they might be right I, I, I can't really tell you but um, that's just kind of the way I approach it and that seems to you know I think Kat work. you probably have like the most direct contact with oh. I thought you were gonna say Kat you probably have the, the most haters out of all of us so Actually, why don't you just lay was, it on I was us. trying to say that nicely <laughs> you probably get yeah. more direct like we have the filter of the comment system in YouTube and we can choose to ignore that yeah. You can't really, when you're a Twitch tr streamer, choose to ignore oh, well, your I, chat. I moderate, I moderate you my, you know, I moderate my stuff. Like, I moderate my YouTube, I, I moderate my pictures on Facebook and stuff. So naturally, I have to read what these other people are saying. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just great love or it's the complete opposite where they just come from very, you know, dark place of like, I got to try to find a way to piss you off or make you feel bad about yourself. And I'm like, hey. What did I do? Um, but yeah, naturally, it's it gives you a thick skin, and you you know you could take the Johnny Depp idea of like I'm not going to even watch or look at anything I've done. I'm just going to keep going. You know, like he doesn't read reviews. He doesn't watch his own movies or anything like that. So you know, I think that's a that's a good point of like just keeping up your you know your your personality and not letting any of the haters get to you. But yeah, they do. I mean, I've I've read comments. I call my dad and I'm like, Dad. Dude, what's stop going on about my boobs? <laughs> like, <laughs> and they say that that's like my relevance. They're like, oh, I hate these uh, cam. You said horse, so I can say it. Yeah, uh, yeah, go for it. You know, they're like, Open yeah, form. I hate these cam whores that are here to just take attention, and um, you know, it, it just it feels like people look for any excuse as to why you're not legitimate, especially for girls. Like, if we don't come with the knowledge and talk the talk and walk the walk, I think a lot of us are, are uh, like, even if I am learning a game and I'm not like the best at it yet, a lot of people in the chat all of a sudden are like, you suck at this game. I'm leaving because I don't like watching you suck. And I'm like, thanks. You know, so yeah, it's just, 
um, it's, it's all over the place. You know, you you get adoring comments. Like I love it when people are very supportive, but at the same time, you can get these haters, and you just build a thick skin, and you learn to find out who you are in the sense of like, yeah, I'm, I'm not that. I don't, you know, I have boobs. I don't care what they say about them. Um, <laughs> and you learn to adjust too. Like I take it as constructive criticism. So like, if I think it's something I need to work on, if I if I hear something that I agree with, then I'll go to my soundboard of friends and family and say, hey, this is you know something that got under my skin. Obviously, it's bothering me for a reason. What do you think that is? And they're you know, so it's it's hard because I have that of like I want to be legit and I want to make sure that people understand that you know I I'm not just some girl that's here for any other reasons besides gaming. And um, it's hard to prove that. It's really hard to get respect. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, I, I agree that you kind of have to have a thick skin with these sorts of things. Otherwise, it'll just it'll break you down. You know what I mean? And it's just yep. it's never going to stop. It's always going to be the internet versus you at times. Um, and I think just, uh, but you know, it's it's almost like the trolls make you stronger in a way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the first time yeah. you're ever trolled, it's a lot harder than like the fifty thousandth time you're trolled. That's true. But I'm you still know? I'm still kind of taking the uh, face in the couch approach. The, oh yeah, right. <laughs> this is Jenny, this is Jenny reading her YouTube comments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't bother. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It is it's one tough. way to do it. Uh, you learn. You learn that's quick. That's true, and honestly, yeah. when I started working here, I knew a lot about like mobile technologies, but I didn't know a lot about DIY PC technology. And uh, our audience, they knew that. They knew that about me. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And it was merciless for about six months. And I wanted to quit. And I didn't know why I was working here. And I didn't felt like I was in eighth everything? grade again. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's and I hard. still make mistakes. Like, I, I'll i make a mistake. I'm human. And I'll say something wrong. And I won't catch it. And our editor doesn't know. And she doesn't catch it. And later I'll finally have time to get around to like watching that video which will already be live and I'll see the comments oh Diddy you said the wrong speed on this read right thing and I'm like yeah. you're right I did but I'm human except for usually that that sentence is followed by new egg fire her she's obviously too yeah, stupid to have this I job know. I know well you know Keep me employed, people. Keep me here and out of your homes. <laughs> so it's easy, like like you said, keyboard warriors, right? It's really easy for people yeah. to criticize and, and critique when they're just sitting on the computer, ty the the ty typing up a storm. Yeah. It's it's difficult. It's tough. I mean, it, people think, oh well, it's easy to just walk, get in front of in front of a camera and just talk, you know, fluently and fluidly. It's it's really not. You know, it's there's a, a lot of job. pressure. It's yeah. it's difficult, especially when you have a, a big following. Like you have so many people, so many people's eyes on you, judging you constantly, and it's like you still have to carry a conversation at the end of the day and just like put aside all of that. You know what I mean? It's a and it's I a huge mental if, thing. If you have these problems, Kyle. I think you do though. Like, don't you just have ugly days? Yeah, you do. I have an ugly. I'm having an ugly day right now. That's why I'm wearing these big ass things as a distraction. Like, don't look at my face. Look at what. And it worked, right? What headset is that? I didn't even realize how ugly Kyle's face is today. But cat, you know what I Brilliant. mean. Like, you wake up in the morning sometimes. You're like, I'm just having a freaking ugly day. I do not want to yeah. be on camera right now. But you have to because that's your job, and you can't. Boogie yep. said this. I don't know if you guys, any of you watch Boogie, <coughs> but he um, he says this. He's like, you can't afford to take two weeks off when you're a YouTuber. No. Because your audience yeah. won't be there when you come back. You can't take a right. vacation. Because you, you're, you're essentially a, I explained this to my grandparents when I was trying to explain to them what YouTube was. <laughs> and it was really eye-opening. I was like, it's like a TV channel that anyone can be on. And they were like, huh, okay. And I'm like, that's why we can't take time off. Because what happens if there's no programming on said channel, then no one's ever going to bother tuning in to find out what's on you know what I mean you need to be pumping out yeah. content regularly it's like one of the one of the little caveats about it um, yeah so it's it's interesting it takes me an hour to get ready just to stream and that cuts into my time of when I want to as well because I always try to do it early for time zones and other things like that but I mean yeah I, I have you know I, I very rarely you know don't prep or like you know have some coffee to get my energy up and you know, my dad worked at Universal. He worked in the studio, so he has a lot of experience with television. And, um, you know, they say be yourself when it comes to some of these things, but it's like yourself times 10. You know, you gotta, you gotta make it interesting. You gotta talk, you gotta fill in the air gaps. You gotta, 
come up with like there's a lot of times where the game gets boring and it's kind of like you know if i were watching it i would naturally want to tune out so you got to find ways of being entertaining and and interacting and and being more just energetic and i think there's there. there's definitely something to be said about hyper extending your own personality when you're on camera yeah. Because, I mean, anyone that we follow, you know, public figures, celebrities, like, n we see them in interviews. No one's ever that interesting in real life. No <laughs> one's no one's ever, like, that on point and, like, that, you know, making, like, cracky, like, witty lines all the time. Like, no one's ever like that. You know, like, that's why we see, like, pictures, like, tabloids on front page of, like, I don't know, some celebrity. Give me a celebrity name. Like... Britney Spears. Britney Spears eating, you know, eating, uh, eating a, a granola bar. And yeah. it's like that makes the front page because that's that's who they are. They're just a regular person. They're not witty. They're not funny all the time. They're just that's the kind of face you have to put on when you're they're in the public produced. eye. It's all produced. They're, yeah, they're produced in the sense of they're told what to wear. Their their makeup is done by a, a ma I wish I had a makeup artist doing my makeup and hair. And oh my gosh, me too. Tell me about it. Jeez, uh, nice. girlfriend. Where? <laughs> But yeah, it's it, it, they all have scripts. They all have uh, people who help build. Like even for Britney Spears, she doesn't make those beats. She's not spending time producing every little bit. There are people that are more well-rounded. But yeah, it's 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 definitely not super easy peasy. Nope. Yeah, I kind of nope. wish I just started out here wearing a wig every day, because that would make my <laughs> life easier. I'm terrible at doing my own hair. <laughs> True story. This is yeah. real life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have way overextended our bounds and our audience, uh, at least the Newegg TV audience probably, is kind of itching to get over to the WAM <laughs> show. So thank you so much, Kat, yep. um, for thank joining you. us today at the last minute. I really appreciate it. Yes. No problem. And we're going to have to get on and uh, play some games together soon. Yeah. That would be get fun. on that dying light. It's four-man co-op. Four-man co-op? We have you, have you done much of the online stuff? Is it pretty fun playing with other people? Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. It's nice to have that because you don't get that a lot in some of these games. So. Right. Cool. cool. Yeah, we'll have to get together and do it. All right, if you want to yeah. hang out for just a second, Kata, Kyle and I are going to close out the show real quick. Bye, everyone. Okay. We're saying bye, right? Yeah, we're saying bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Alt-Tab. You can catch us here weekly, 3 p.m. Pacific time, and have a good weekend. We are bye. out.